The auction room, where hope, nerves and restraint all play their part in what could be called the ultimate marketplace. So how are auctions set up and where do all the potential lots come from? It's this one here, then, is it? Pieces from off the mantelpiece or out of the attic are brought in for valuation. Yeah, round, really. about, round about 1929, mm. 31, quite a limited production one. Mm. Yeah, made by Wilkinson, nice back stamp, uh, Clarice Cliff nicely marked there, impressed Isis uh, on the base as well. It's, it looks a very nice piece and quite rare. Um, I notice there's a slight crack, John, just in the, yeah, in the rim spot, there. Man. Oh, yes. um, which you know will detract from the value a little bit and some of the painting has been chipped as well so it's not what you could call in mint condition um, it's pretty good though isn't it it's pretty good and yeah. quite rare so a nice piece to have Had a chance the to owner of the vase comes in to hear the news um, and sure enough it's um, quite a rare example of uh, Wilkinson uh, pottery yes. um, decorated by a lady painteress called Clarice Cliff um, the people who do collect Clarus Cliff would go to all sorts of lengths to acquire a piece like this. Now we've got to come to the, the, uh, the crunch bit and how much we would expect to get for it uh, in an auction sale. Um, as I say, it's quite rare. It's a rare pattern. Single-handled Isis vase. I would expect it to bring somewhere in the region of around about 1,000 to 1,500. <gasps> My goodness. <laughs> well, it was a neighbour of my dad. When she died, she passed it on to my father. And then he let me have it. It's been on the unit. It's been in the corner. It's been all over the place. Nearly been knocked off a few times. Well, I think if it gets into the hands of someone that will really treasure it, you know, I'll, I'll be happy because I know they'll, they'll really enjoy it. Happy with the valuation, the piece is put into the next auction. But first, it has to pose for the camera as part of the mammoth task of cataloguing each and every piece that comes up for sale. By coincidence, a second and even rarer piece of Clarice Cliff pottery has been discovered. It was in the hallway on the floor. So that would probably account for the damage of that. This was the first time anybody had seen such a shape with that particular pattern. Being so unusual can present problems. I think we've got a problem with with the large bars, in that I don't, it's a non standard Clarice Cliff shape. But we can catalogue the other one, in oh, that yes, it's, it's a single handed yeah. ISIS vase. That's what, that's what we want to do next. So we've got uh, quite a lot to get catalogued through, uh, and time's getting short. Well, we're off today to see a gentleman who is the grandson of Stanley Thompson who's a quite distinguished local painter. And when I get down there, we should be able to see the actual cottage that the artist worked in. And I am hoping that we're going to get some very choice pieces for the next sale. There's an element of the unknown in these expeditions. You're never quite sure what you're going to turn up. It might be a very good job with some very nice items that ultimately are going to make a lot of money. It's like everything else, it's, it's a bit like fishing, a bit like hunting. You're not quite sure what you're going to bag. Mr Bales? Hello? I must say, Mr Bales, I think it's, I think it's marvellous to come down here and see the, the cottage exactly as your... Well, not quite exactly as your grandfather had it, but to see the cottage where your grandfather worked. But it's, it's great because you, you get to see everything, really. I noticed there's a chair up there, isn't there, that's in one of the, that's in one of the paintings. It was quite uh, marvellous the way he set the whole thing up, with very, very few props. Of course, the chairs and the um, vases and things were still got. Now, this is one of the two major paintings we'll be looking to get most of the money on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just what your grandfather specialises in women in interiors with this very, very nice sense of atmosphere and detail. From the point of view of selling, I'd like to think we're, we're into the region of around about two or three thousand pounds. Yeah. I'm very fond of this one as well. Well, I think, I think it's, it's going to be the highlight of the sale. It's a super painting, one of his earlier works. If you look at the date, it's 1911, I think, isn't it? Yes, it is. 
uh, signed with his initials, and then you can just make out 1911. He the always board. signed paintings with his, he never signed his name, it was only his initials. People who, uh, who buy paintings they always buy them uh, and they appreciate them. They buy them, I know, for an investment, but secondly, they, they like to see them on the wall. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be loved and cared for wherever they go. They're good paintings. That's the last one. Lovely. Let's just make sure she's nice and secure. Get her back safely. There we go. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. Let's hope we have a successful sale. Let's hope we have a successful sale. I did have an idea, which I must say at the moment isn't very well formed, but it's it's to do with having a photograph in the catalogue, put together some kind of still life, perhaps mock up some, some sort of idea of a corner of an artist's studio. Uh, just a job That's exactly what Back at the office, and a recent press release about the Claris Cliff pottery has created a lot of attention with just about everybody okay. wanting to cover the story. Hopes were that the vase would fetch several thousand pounds. We've got a press agent and he will give out various stories which relate to usually individual objects in the sale. Here's a case in point. Here's the front page of the local journal where Nick Fortune is on, on page one. And as you can see on the inside here, we've got a nice colour photograph of Nick, it's nice and big, it's nicely written and in featuring one particular lot we've managed to promote all 2,000 lots in the sale. Good morning everyone, uh, welcome to the first day sale. Starting with, uh, starting with lot number one, there we are, an electric table lamp uh, in the form of a column. Well, who's starting me 10 pounds for this, please? 10 pounds anywhere? 10 anywhere? 500 to start me. It's day one, and at last the sale is up and running. These are the moments when all the preparations give way to the business of selling, when dealers look for stock for their business, and ordinary punters try their luck at picking up that special bargain or collector's piece by the bidding on the sale room floor and sometimes from long distance on the telephone. It's going to at 6,000. £6,200 on the telephone. You all finished in the room at £6,200. You got it. £6,200, well done. Same as the last. Well, a pretty good price for that one. And remember Mrs. Jefferson's Clarice Cliff vase. For £1,300. For £1,300. For £1,300. £1,400. For £1,400. For £1,400. At £1,400. Well, I got quite a surprise, actually. I'm, I could be a shock. <laughs> More like a shock. But, uh, I never expected it, that price, you know. Well, someone's told me it's going to Pennsylvania, America, further than I've ever been. <laughs> The second piece made even more at two and a half thousand pounds. 